Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. When you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified each time we put up a new video. If you tap on the little like button, we appreciate that too. Well, we've been working with this carburetor here and the last time we worked on this carburetor, I was trying to set the float level and was having difficulty with it and went, okay, I'm going to finish it when nobody's looking. So I did. You do it over and over again until you get it right. And that's what I did. And right here is my little measuring stick. And I needed a quarter inch there. And there is my quarter inch. It's right there. Anyway. We got the quarter inch, and if you look at the drawing that I showed, the, the instructions that came with the float, which are just the same as the factory instructions, they show you how to make the float just a little off center here to the left, which it is. You can also see a little bit better, I think, that, that little, there it is. Okay, that quarter inch. Okay, so the float level is set. Now I also use some quick drying hard gasket sealant. This is old-timey stuff. They used it a lot in aircraft. Basically, we usually want stuff that doesn't harden. In this case, we want something that does. And what we need to do is we put it right there on the screw so that doesn't loosen up. That's all. Not a big deal. So now to put the float, the uh, float bolt on the carburetor, we have a gasket here, and my favorite here for doing this, a little white lithium. I'm about ready to just put it on my finger. If nobody's watching, I put it on my finger anyway, so I'll just be a slob today. Just a little film of it on there is enough, really. And, uh, Put it on both sides. Now there's enough for three of them there on my finger. Yeah, that pretty much does it. Not a big deal. So we'll put the float bowl on. Now right here, there's really nothing needs to be sealed, but I don't know why I put it there. Now, these usually are a pretty tight fit. This one's no exception, but it's a nice fit. It's on there. And next, what we're going to do is put the float bowl on. Okay, now the emulsion tube, which you can see in the carburetor, let me get the throttle open a little bit so you get some light in there. You can see the emulsion tube coming up the center that holds the Venturi in place. It's way in there. But you can see it. It's in there. And this spring holds it in place. So that spring goes there. Then we have a little copper packing that goes between the float bowl and the float bowl nut. As you can see, I'm using my secret sauce here. Put some of that on there. And put that in place. Real fancy with the rags here. And this is the nut. It goes on the bottom. To hold the float bowl on there. Now, the top and bottom surfaces of the float bowl, which I probably should have shown before I put them on, but now I put them on. What you do is you put some sandpaper, some fine sandpaper on a nice flat surface and make sure that you have really nice smooth flat surfaces, both where the nut goes on and where the float bowl goes on to the gasket with the body there. Now this nut takes a one inch wrench 
and it's got to be good and tight because that packing that goes in there, we can call it a gasket, we can call it a seal, we can call it a packing, it's all those things. So what you want to do, we're going to put this thing in the vise again. All we want to do is keep it from turning while I tighten that nut. And let me tell you, that's a big nut. Be hanging onto the carburetor with a wrench this long. And notice that this seal packing gasket crushes as we tighten the nut. It's copper over some kind of material. I don't know what that material was. I think in the old days it was asbestos. What it is today is anybody's guess. It's like what they put in hot dogs, I guess. Okay, that's good and tight as far as I'm concerned. Okay, that carburetor is all together. One little exception. Okay, let's see here. Now remembering, let's see, we got the little lever here that has to go on here. Now we got to put a, I just dropped it. It fell by my foot. I felt it. I can't see it. You know, it just so happens I have another one. We'll find this one later. Unless that's it. Nope. Well, gee. Again, this is me not getting frustrated. I know there's a new one in this bag. So we'll take it out of there. Ooh, that was dumb. It was kind of a funky old spring. I can see the new one in this bag. And anyone who wonders, the dog that's barking is not my dog. My dog doesn't do that. My dog knows we're making videos. Or a video. And there's that little spring right there. I can see it from here. There it is. I'll be sure and seal up this kit when we get done. Now the big deal is that spring goes under the little throttle level lever here. So we're going to put that little lever in place. We're going to push it down against the spring a little bit. And we want to get that idle screw backed off quite a bit here. So I think what we'll do, back that idle screw off. That's idle speed screw. So that when we go to adjust it, we'll have a whole bunch of adjustment to play with. That spring is under tension, so it holds the throttle shaft in perfect position. And then there's a screw right over on this side, which will clamp this arm right down onto the shaft. Now any final adjustments we want to do on that, we'll be able to do with the carburetor on the bike. Let me see if I can get my hand twisted around to do that. There it goes. I can feel with my other finger, I can feel it coming out the other side. And there it is. Again, this, this one uses a throttle cable that pushes the throttle open 
rather than pulling it. So we may change this arm and we may not when we put the bike together. But there's a carburetor that is all finished up. I set it according to the numbers that I had written here on how many clicks they were open. Although I felt the low speed needle was probably open a little too much. I generally start with those needles a little different than the book does. I usually start with the low speed needle out one and a half turns and the high speed needle one and a quarter. The idea is to be able to start the engine and then, and then adjust it once it's warm. Well, I, I suppose it depends a lot on where you live. I'm quite a bit above sea level here. Last place I lived was right at sea level. And I usually start them just the same and then adjust them according to the, how they're running. Once the motor's warm, don't try to get an exact adjustment on those needles until the motor warms up. But here we have a nice complete carburetor. And we've got a manifold and all that to put on in our next video. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.